Hello, I'm Lorraine Watry, and this is my YouTube channel. I uh, have been absent from YouTube for about a year. I'm very busy with teaching and other um, obligations, and I am hoping to get back into uh, putting some videos up on YouTube and helping you in your watercolor journey. And it may not be uh, every week, it may just be once a month, but I'm hoping to fit them in. Uh, I decided uh, to try putting up videos of paintings I am working on, either for a class or a demonstration or a workshop, and uh, talking a little bit about them as I'm working. And some of them will already be uh, videos that I have recorded, and I will show the um, video and do some voiceovers talking about some of the uh, um, techniques that I'm using. These won't be full um, class videos, but they'll give you some information. So I hope they're helpful, and uh, I hope to see you soon on YouTube. Thanks. Bye. Right now I am working on finishing up a demonstration that I did on painting metal. And you can see from my photo that this is a, a little bird figurine that is um, reflective uh, silver. And so I am, uh, for the demo I was showing how for metal you need to use uh, strong lights and darks. So it's really important to uh, reserve your whites and have good strong uh, darks in there. And then metal and glass are about painting little pieces. So I have um, some masking fluid, you can see maybe possibly <laughs> up here at the top of the bird on the head, and then I've got some uh, back here on the tail and just a few other places on the bird. And then next to uh, the metal bird, I had some little glass beads uh, sitting there, and some of that is reflecting in there, and then other things around uh, the bird were uh, reflecting into the metal. So when you get started on painting metal, um, it's really important to have a good uh, drawing so that you can see all the different shapes and uh, it gives you kind of a road map of, of all of the different um, little pieces and um, it is it is like painting kind of an abstract in that sense because you're you're working with a lot of little shapes and, and things uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the um, shadow in that's down below the bird and I was just talking to them at this demo about painting metal so I um, wasn't worried about uh, putting in the background so this is just kind of a little study that I was doing and so it's um, just got a few pieces here and there but I'm not worried about putting a background in. Now this uh, when I took the picture uh, this was sitting on my art table and it uh, was lit um, from a couple different directions because I have several different uh, lights above my art table and so this um, bird has underneath it it has shadows that are coming from a couple different ways so they overlap and right now I'm using a little bit of ultra or uh, cobalt and some burnt sienna for that shadow to make a gray and then that has to dry so I can't uh, mess with anything else around there I could go ahead and put that little shadow in that's behind the bird and so this is on dry paper the pieces that I've already done on the bird I just basically started by picking out an area that I could figure out where it was, what the colors are, and all of that. And I think I started um, somewhere around the head. It's been a little bit since I did this. And so I still have more that I need to do on there. Since I've got that shadow in now, the shadow can also help um, give an object some weight because it makes it feel like it's sitting on something. And so I will have to go back in and put the other darker parts of the shadow in, but uh, for right now, I will move on and just let that dry. Um, this is my dark mix that I just picked up, and this is um, ultramarine and burnt sienna. And 
If you've never tried painting metal or glass, one of the good ways to kind of get yourself um, familiar with it is uh, try something small. So for glass, you might just try painting a marble. And it really helps if there's something around the object that is reflective, that is reflecting either color or um, value changes or something like that. And value, I mean lights and darks. Um, into that object so that there's something to reflect. Um, you will get some reflections from objects around your space if you've set up a, a little still life. And um, I just sometimes use my phone to take pictures of those um, setups. It really just kind of depends on um, what I'm what I'm working with. Sometimes I will, well not sometimes, a lot of the time I will use my digital uh, camera and I walk around the objects and I teach, take lots of photos, sorry, um, and just get angles, uh, lots of different angles and it'll be, um, for me, it's very interesting to see what I can find in the objects that are um, reflecting, what, what objects are reflecting in, in the uh, shapes. And actually in this one, um, I know it won't look like it, but this shape right here is my hand. Uh, I was using my phone at the time to take a picture, and so um, it's part of my hand and my fingers are right up in here. And um, when you're painting glass or metal, you don't really need to know what those shapes are to paint them. You just need to think kind of in an abstract um, way and look at the different uh, shapes that have been created and also um, look at the color and the value, the dark and the light of that um, shape. And um, you don't necessarily have to paint everything in, so um, some things have gotten a little lost in my um, painting and other things uh, are probably standing out a little bit more than what's on the actual image. but. Um, it's about a balance of interesting uh, shapes and colors and light and dark. All right, I'm mix making a little bit more of my darker value. Actually, I think I used um, my ultramarine deep rather than, I have, uh, these are Holbein. Most of my paints are Daniel Smith, but I have uh, ultramarine deep and ultramarine light on my palette as Holbein. Today is kind of a blustery day out there. We're expecting some snow possibly tomorrow and actually tomorrow is Thanksgiving so rather than uh, being in the kitchen right now which is what I need to go to next, I thought I would sit down and work on this a little bit. It kind of depends on the situation, but sometimes I just need to get some painting time in. Okay, so um, one of the things on here in this area right there is I put that dark in, but uh, there are some edges that are softer. And so I put it in as a hard edge, meaning I just painted it on dry paper and then I let it dry. I am going back right now and darkening it because it wasn't quite as dark as I was seeing and there is a little bit of that color up in there. I'm using my uh, number 12 brush. I think I'm going to put some water on the paper right quick. So I need to wait for that layer to dry that I just put on and I'm placing some water here while I'm waiting for the other area and I'm going to uh, just dot in some of that darker mix and that will give me some hard and soft edges depending on if it touches the water or not and a little bit of a blurry look um, to parts of that. I think I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit. It'll be easier to see.
and the uh, black area down here that I put in is not dry but it's getting there and so I'm going to work with those edges a little and this is sometimes I feel comfortable doing this but sometimes it is better just to wait and let this um, dry so that you don't accidentally move paint that you don't want to move because if it's still damp you could move um, it could pull some of that black too far out if you're wetting the edge and you can run into blooms and other things this way so it's just something to be careful of doing or doing um, let's see down at the bottom there's some dark right in here and I probably won't remove the mask on all my little light shapes until I am pretty satisfied with the majority of this painting because that way I can make sure I can do some adjustments or make um, color changes if I need to and I don't have to worry about painting around those shapes so still dry. Most of this is going to be on dry paper because um, I don't necessarily have any need to use wet on wet right now. I did use some wet on wet down here meaning I put clear water down and before it had dried I came down and put some color in various places because down at the bottom of the silver part of the bird it's um, it's got some reflections of probably the shadows and some of the other things and so it's it's a little mottled looking so it's lights and darks and a little bit of a variety so it, it um, has an unusual uh, texture down there now there is a bead over here that is off the side that you can't see the actual bead but I'm going to go ahead and put uh, the base coat for that in and um, I started to say my brush is a silver black velvet series I don't know that you can read it anymore but it's a number 12 and it has a, a really um, good point on it so it allows me to get into small areas and so I tend to paint with the biggest brush I can until that area is too hard to paint alright so that bead has some light orange on the edges and then it'll be darker kind of burnt orange in the center All right so I think I'll leave that I do have some darks in here that I still need to put in um, so I can do them now but I think I'll work on some of the other areas first and to decide what color I want to use. I think I'm going to try a little bit of my new gamboge. So if I am doing a painting, so this for me would be like a color study. Um, a color study is something that you can get an idea of the colors you're using, you can get an idea of the process that you might use to do that painting and um, it just kind of gives you a working um, map of what you might do in your actual painting and so for me even though I can sit down and I could take out a piece of paper and I've done this with plenty of paintings but basically take a piece of paper and try a color and then decide if I'm going to use it I'm not so concerned about that on here because this sort of is my area of trying color. Now if I decided that I really liked a mix and I didn't want to forget what that mix is, sometimes what I will do is take a pen and just write, so I might like write that um, a little arrow and put blue, so that's this blue area and then I could say it's cobalt and a touch of, um, I think that's um, Phthalo, turquoise, and then it's got a second layer of ultramarine. 
So I could write all of that down and that gives me something to look at later when I'm going to do my big painting. And I don't always do color studies anymore, but I often will do um, little sections of a painting to test whether or not my colors are what I want to use or if I want to make some adjustments. And then sometimes I will try an area to get um, the process of what techniques I might use as well. That was a little bit of sap green back here. There's a bead, this green bead. And it's actually reflecting twice because the metal bird um, turns and has a little bit of an undulation to it. So when you're doing metal and glass, depending on the shape of the glass or the metal and um, just how it reflects things, you might get distortions, you might get um, several copies of the same object, um, things might be turned upside down, um, you know, just depending on, on what's reflecting. Um, so these areas are a little wet. That one is probably dry now, so I'm going to switch my brush here. And I'm going to use my Transparent Parole Orange as the first coat on here. But then I'll probably come back and put another layer. And I did switch to my, I think this is my six, yeah. And this first layer gives it some color, but then I can adjust it with the second layer to go a little darker in value and a little kind of more muted. Um, I think I'm going to go to the bead that is actually the uh, little glass bead that's sitting here and put in some color on that. Sometimes it's just fun to sit down and Put some marks on the paper and not be too concerned with it being perfect. All right. Um, and I do have a very detailed glass painting that I did uh, that is on my website. Got into the National Watercolor Society exhibition and this last year for the international show. Um, and it's on the home page. So if you want to see a very detailed glass painting. You can go look at that one. And then I've done some band paintings with lots of metal in them. I'm trying to see which side is lighter. I think this this side is a little lighter on that. Uh, one thing to know about watercolor is that your watercolor will tend to dry 20 to 30 percent lighter than how you apply it. So you may need to go back and darken areas or adjust them if they are too light. It's a little bit of a blue around that bead back there. Okay, so this bead right here, I said I was going to come back to that and I'm going to get out, try some Quinn Magenta with my transparent parole orange and see if that's going to work. I am leaving a little bit of that first layer of the um, transparent parole peeking through just a little bit because I liked that color. I think I want to put a little bit of my ultramarine blue in the mix and some of those areas that I just put on the dark or the um, 
magenta mix is uh, still a little wet so that'll blur these edges will blur together okay now that does have a shadow under it but I won't put the shadow on until that's drier there is a little bit of a shadow right here and it can help when you're working on something like this um, as you're painting around the shapes um, you might notice something that you didn't see before and so just kind of going back and looking again sometimes you'll see things that you want to add or adjust and I do um, often get away from my paintings and go do other things for a little while sometimes I will take my paintings with me so that I can see them kind of at a distance as I'm doing other things and that can help me see if something needs adjusting so I think I'm going to get this dark in here and then I will probably finish up this video with a sped up time lapse so you can see how I go through some of those shapes and how I work with the values and then maybe at the very end I'll slow it down so you can see when I take the mask off what it looks like then. So I'll see you in a few minutes.
So as you can see, I removed the mask and uh, I am now going to go around and clean up those shapes. The tool that I was using is a rubber cement pickup tool and it's just a, like a rubbery eraser and uh, it does get kind of messy on the corners with masking fluid on it but it doesn't hurt anything and usually you can find these um, near mask um, in your store or just look up a rubber cement pickup uh, tool and or rubber cement pickup and uh, it just makes it a quick way to remove the mask and I usually rub my fingers you saw me doing that um, around just to make sure that I've uh, got all the mask off uh, the paint can sometimes hide it and then I usually will go back and adjust masked edges um, because I don't want it to feel like those shapes aren't part of the painting. So sometimes it's going back and lifting and uh, softening an edge, not lifting necessarily, but softening an edge. And other times I will clean up the edge so that it looks um, a little neater because sometimes the tool that you're using is not exactly um, perfect and or the mask is a little stiff or something as you're applying it. So if it is a, a shape that I can use the paint right around that shape to clean up an edge, I will do that. And I'm just kind of letting the paint help me adjust these shapes and already these uh, over here are starting to feel a little um, more connected to the painting because they kind of blend in and generally with a line I will maybe just go to the end of the line and sort of soften it into that area. Um, so for these there's enough dark paint around it that I don't have to try to match any paint or make a new mix on my palette to use and just also with uh, glass and metal those shapes sometimes will have softer edges they're not all hard edged uh, especially uh, something that is looking shiny you you might have an edge that um, and this is just a, a round brush now there's not enough paint around this area to really soften that edge or wake up the pigment because it's a uh, lighter pigment. So I'm going to go with my flat brush and just see if I can soften that edge a little bit. And what I was saying about softer edges is that you get the feeling of shine when you have those kind of blurry edges where it feels like light is really hitting that object. So I, I do look for those and sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, um, show you right here on that shape that's right here it actually has a hard edge over here so I could leave it hard edged but um, I like the look of a little bit of a fuzzy edge with glass and metal so I am adjusting it okay and then up in the corner just go around that a little bit now depending on the color you're using you may have um, color that doesn't move easily if it's a staining color sometimes certain brands pigments work differently than others and uh, so you may just have to use um, either a flat brush that's a little stiffer than a round would be or um, sometimes I will pull out a brush that has even a stiffer bristle so this bristle is even stiffer than the one I was just using and uh, just check your paper because some paper um, can't handle the, the stiffer bris br oh, I can't talk the stiffer bristles and uh, they might um, get too roughed up or they might tear. So just make sure you have good quality 100% cotton paper. And even if it's 100% cotton, sometimes it can't handle some of the techniques that I do on arches or Fabriano. And I use mostly 140 pound cold press watercolor papers, so um, it, it, uh, the, both of those I've tested and a lot of the lifting and masking and all of those techniques that I do, they both work well with that. Uh, if you're using hot press um, or maybe even rough, I have not done a lot of painting on rough, maybe only a couple in my 29 years. So um, 
I would just test your paper on a separate piece, put down some color, and try some of these things before you might um, use your actual paper. And then, so you can see where I've softened some of those edges, and I'm now going to go back on some of them. I need my small brush, and I am going to clean up some of those edges and maybe make some of those shapes a little smaller. Now in this instance, the color or the shapes that I've removed the mask from are mostly white. However, right in here, so I can just get some paint that's pretty close. And if it's not quite the right value, I can take some clear water on my brush and just put that water next to the color and just blur it into the area around it. Um, and what I was going to say before I interrupted myself is that sometimes uh, those shapes are going to have some color on them. So I could go back, in fact this uh, line right here has a tiny bit of color on it. It's not pure white. It's this big shape next to it that stays white. And I'll just put a little bit of color in there. And so it's still there as a light shape, but it's not as bright as the one next to it. So you can go back into those areas that you may have masked because they were a small shape and you didn't want to um, possibly lose that shape. And you can just go ahead and paint on them if, if they have color. So sometimes I will mask shapes that uh, would be hard to paint around or that I don't want to um, possibly forget to paint around and then end up um, putting color on them. Okay, so this is a little bit of a slow process because I just want to make sure that I uh, adjust or clean up those mask shapes. And so I will just go ahead and continue doing that and I'll be back in a few seconds. I am interrupting my uh, masking cleanup here right quick because I want to mention that I am a uh, master artist mentor with a group um, out of Canada. It's an online um, forum in order to help artists uh, get where they want to with their own artwork and um, if you're interested in it you can look up Masterius, M-A-S-T-R-I-U-S dot com and uh, the sessions run once a month and um, you'll have to look into the pricing and all of that but uh, that is a um, option for some help uh, with your watercolor and uh, there is a 
um, information page on my website as well with some of uh, some more information about it and I don't uh, demo every session but we talk about things like composition and color and uh, other things having to do with our artwork um, how to price your artwork that kind of thing so um, if you might be interested in that, like I said, it's Mastrius, M-A-S-T-R-I-U-S dot com. And then also on my website, I have um, videos, video lessons from classes that I have done. And uh, they, the videos do not expire. It is the full length class. And you can go on um, at your own pace and I walk you through the process and I also give you the instructions and the um, image and the drawing and so I have five of those available on my website as well. Here is uh, the final painting and you could see throughout the video that I went back and forth and adjusted areas, darkened shapes or added in some uh, shapes and colors and then I finished up by unmasking and uh, coming back and adjusting the edges and cleaning some of those areas up, sometimes putting some color in there so that uh, it looked like it was part of the original painting and not kind of plastered on there. And I hope it was an interesting process to follow along. Uh, the demo painting finished took about two hours and so it was a little too long to show the whole process. That's why I sped up portions of it and I hope you enjoyed seeing that and I will see you in a future video and I hope you have a good day. See you soon. Bye.